Good morning. Welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and I want to give a rest in peace shout out to Chairman Fred Hampton before we get started. All right. So, today we're going to be working on how to calculate slope when you're given two points on a line. All right. I want to, I want to get into that. All right. So, first thing I want to do is I want to write down the formula for slope. All right. Slope is represented by the lowercase letter m in our current situation. When we use the slope intercept formula, which is y equals mx plus b, that m in the slope intercept formula is equal to the rise divided by the run. Now, what does that mean? And that's equal to something else. But let me pause right here and talk about what rise over run means. So if you start out at one point on a graph, right, then in order to get to the next point, you have to travel a vertical distance. That vertical distance could be up or it could be down, right? Well, you could stay in the same place, right? So you got three choices, you know, in terms of what your vertical distance, your rise is going to be. If it's positive, you move up. If it's negative, you move down. And if it's zero, you stay at that point. You stay at that level vertically, all right? The denominator is your run, all right? It's your run. That's your horizontal movement. So... This number down here determines how far you move and in which direction you move horizontally. If this number in the denominator is positive, that means you move to the right. That's not the right, that's the left. <laughs> I'm tripping. That means you move to the right if it's positive. If it's negative, you move to the left. And if it's zero, it's undefined because we can't, divide, we can't divide by zero. If we have zero in our denominator ever, that's undefined, right? We don't do that using the real number system in math, right? That means that that will be a vertical line, which is straight up and down anyway. Straight up and down like 6 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? So, well, what's the actual formula, right? The actual formula that we use where we replace the letters with numbers looks like this. Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 divided by X sub 2 minus X sub 1. All right? So take a moment to write that down. Y sub 2, not Y to the second power. Because the exponent, well, this is a subscript. This is not a superscript or an exponent. This is why sub 2. Called sub because that's a subscript. Like underneath, like a submarine is underwater, right? This is sub 2, this is sub 1. This is sub 2, and this is sub 1. So what this represents is the change in the y values divided by the change in the x value. That's what this represents, all right? And that's going to give us our slope. The slope also tells us, or indicates to us, how flat or how slanted the line is going to be when I draw it. Now, if the slope is zero, it's going to be a horizontal line. So it's going to be real flat. But if it's, you know, positive, it's going to go like up in the air like this. If it's positive, if it's negative, it's going to go downhill like this, right? And the slope tells us how flat or how slanted it's going to be. All right, so the first thing I recommend you do is you look at your two points that you're given, right? Because you got to be given two points. And you should label and identify which number out of these four numbers, one, two, three, four, which number is your x1, which number is your y1, which number is your x2, which number is your y2. We should identify those things. So this negative 5 right here is going to be my x1. Why is it x1? Like, where did it get that name? Just like a lot of us got nicknames. If you got a nickname, you got that nickname for a reason. You did something or somebody thought you looked like something or somebody or whatever, right? Or just an homage of a and to pay an homage to an elder, you got a nickname for some whatever reason. This is called x1 because it's the x value in the first point. This is the first point. These are the coordinates of the first point. This is the second point, right? But this is the x value and this is the y value. Every point has an x value and a y value. We're looking at it in a two-dimensional system, right? With a two-dimensional, you know, situation, right? We're not not into the 3D and everything, but just 2D. X, court, X plane and a Y plane, right? X axis, Y axis. So this is the first number, or the, in the first point, the X value. This negative 4 is the first, y, the first Y because it's the Y value in the first point also. Then over here, this is the second point. This is the second point right here. The second point. This is the X value in the second point. This 6 is the Y value also in the second point. So this negative 5 is the x value of the first point, hence x1, 
This negative 4 is the y value in the first point. Hence, y1. That's why I got that name. This negative 2 is the x value in the second point. Hence, x2. This positive 6 is the y value in the second point. Hence, y2. All right? So I say that should be your first point. Well, your first step, I mean. Your first step is to just label these four digits, right? When you get the hang of this, you might not have to take the time to just label. You might just be able to take the numbers and just throw them right into the formula, all right? But until you get to that point where you have that level of proficiency, I highly recommend you label each of these numbers, x1, y1, x2, y2, all right? Now, since I know what my values are, I'm just going to throw them into the formula. So now I got y2, which is 6. I write my minus sign. Y1 is negative 4. Now, this is something I want to I want to pay some pay pay um some particular attention to because a lot of students they don't like to write two negative signs back to back for some reason. They don't like to write it, they don't like to do it. But the formula already has a minus sign in it. But if your y1 is negative, then that means you need the, another minus sign or another negative sign. So do this. 6 minus negative 4. Alright? Don't just write 6 minus 4. Because this is not a 4. This is a negative 4. The formula already has a minus sign in it. In this case, the number has a minus sign in it or a negative sign. And that's another thing. Minus signs and negative signs are the same thing. They represent the same thing. All right? So that means you need two minus signs or two negative signs. All right? And when we actually simplify that, that's a double negative, And a double negative becomes addition every time. It doesn't become subtraction. It becomes addition. Minus minus means addition. It becomes addition. So in this numerator, what we're going to end up doing is 6 plus 4. All right, now go to the denominator. Put the x's in there. My x2 is negative 2. I write my minus sign. My x1 is negative 5. Again, we got the same scenario. You need to have both minus signs. So we got negative 5 right there. So now we got all our numbers in the proper places. Now it's time to actually do the mathematics and do the calculation. It's time for that now. All right. So this double negative becomes addition. So that becomes 6 plus 4. And I'm going to just show every step instead of, before, instead of just going straight into the answer. This negative 2 minus negative 5 becomes negative 2 plus 5. All right? Again, double negatives, meaning minus signs in between the numbers, in between the numbers, not this negative sign. This negative sign has nothing to do with a double negative in this case, right? Two negative signs becomes addition. Negative 2 plus 5. 6 plus 4. Now, go back to our elementary school math. 6 plus 4 is 10. So our numerator is 10. This negative 2 plus 5, negative 2 on the, on the number line, you start at negative 2. You're adding, so you move it to the right, and you're adding 5. So you want 5 spaces to the right. That gives me 3. Now, what this means is my slope is 10 over 3. Now, I know it's 10 over 3 because I can't reduce this. You should always try to reduce fractions no matter what. But in this particular case, we can't reduce this. Because 10 and 3 don't have a common factor besides 1. And if I divide each number by 1, I still get 10 over 3. Now, if I was actually using this to try to graph and try to draw a line, that means I could start at any point on the line. And this positive 10 means that I need to, from that point, I need to move up 10 spaces. This positive 3 in the denominator, again, this is my run. This is my run. The rise was my 10, so I go up. I rise up 10 spaces. My run is positive 3. So I go to the right 3 spaces. Right? So if my point was here, meaning like this is how I would look, right? If my point was here, my first point, I would go up 10 spaces and then go over like 3 spaces and be right there. And then I would go up 10 spaces and go over like 3 spaces and be right there. And then I would draw a line through those 2 points. I mean, that's that's just quick and dirty, but actually three points. That's quick and dirty, but I just want to I just want to show you an idea of how you actually use the slope to draw a line, right? These two numbers, they're directions. The slope is a set of directions. The slope is not a point. A lot of students confuse that. They think that the slope is a point, just like the y-intercept is an actual point or a location. The slope is not a location. The slope tells you how to get to the location. Just like when you're using GPS on your phone. Same thing. There's a set of directions. You put an address in. You put a starting address, you put an ending address. The starting address is like your y-intercept. The ending address is like your next point. How did you get there, though? What route did you take? That's like your slope. Your slope tells you how to get from one point to the next. 
That's what the slope does. All right. So memorize this formula. Know how to put the numbers in the right places. You need four numbers. One, two, three, four. All right. Oh, also, don't forget that when you're subtracting a negative, subtract the negative. Don't leave none of the negative signs out or the minus signs out. Double negatives become addition. Keep that in mind. And always reduce your fractions if you can. This particular slope, this particular fraction, we couldn't reduce that. So we just leave it as 10 over 3. So that's going to be our slope. All right? So please like the video. Please share the video. Send it to somebody in the text or something like that. Uh, put it on social media, whatever. You know, I just want people to learn math. That's it. I just want people to be able to come here, learn math. If you're in your school or wherever you're at and you're not learning it, you just don't really get it, come through. Come to all this math. That's all I'm saying. All right. So subscribe to the page if you haven't already. Tell some other people about it. And as usual, always remember, there's all this math all around you. Peace.